By the way, at this point, we were three hours into this show, four if you count the pre-show. And the CEO of Moxley Plumbing was still out in the parking lot. Three hours into the... That used to cost money. I wonder if it still does. Because from the time that we started doing pay-per-view with Crockett and then later on with WCW and with WWF and TNA and not the Ring of Honor pay-per-views because they were internet pay-per-view. That's what they... Sometimes they weren't on that. But with all the regular televised pay-per-view events, you had a three-hour satellite window. And that's why... um. The rule always used to be that the show would go, and I, I know the in your houses were two hours, but bear with me on this. Point is, an even even amount of time, you had a three hour window on the pay per view. The pay per view had to go off the air by two fifty five in because they needed five minutes to re rack the replay and get it up at the top of the hour. And if you went long they would charge you for another hour of satellite time. This fucking thing was almost four hours long, five if you count the pre-show, and goddamn the greatest cards in the history of wrestling weren't that long, and they had good matches from top to bottom. This was dreck to begin with, and it was interminably long. Are they trying to punish people? So anyway, it's an exploding business death match, killing the business with the CEO of Moxley Plumbing and the CEO of Twinkle Toes Theatrics. Did you see Harpo's cartoon drawing? I did. That was on Twitter the other day. The, the official company Twitter, by the way. Harpo Fingerbang did a cartoon crayon drawing of how deadly the, the the deadly plan for this exploding barbed wire death match with all the exploding bomb pits and the everything it looked like something that a, a fucking nine-year-old de- would do at summer camp and they tweeted it out as if to that would make can you imagine if dusty had let dustin when he was 12 draw a picture of the war games cage and they put it on TBS. So this is an exploding barbed wire death match. And to make it look even more goofy and unprofessional looking, the wrestlers decided to compete in their grubby street clothes while the referee was wearing a hazmat suit. I'm not making this up. Barbed wire boards in two corners of the ring, barbed wire wrapped around all the ropes, barbed wire boards around three sides of the ring, and Callus immediately on color referred to the explosions as effects before they'd hardly even started the thing yet. (sighs) Brian? I hate it when I'm right. But do you remember what I said about this a couple weeks ago? In fact, I do. And in fact, because I saw so many people on Twitter mention it, I actually pulled that audio. Oh, you well, well, that's why don't you just instead of me saying it again now after the fact, why don't you play what I said about this stupid idea for a match about two weeks ago, long before it took place? This is from Jim Cornette Experience, episode 369, approximately two and a half weeks ago or so. Here is the clip. They're fucking, it's stupid. It never works. It just looks low rent and cheap and sideshowish and outlaw. And guys try to have garbage matches in the middle of this and it doesn't fucking work. And I have high expectations that this is going to be a technical fiasco and another outlaw garbage match between two fucking guys that don't know how to work. That's pretty much my opinion on what's going to come up. We shall see because we're going to watch this thing. I wouldn't miss it now. Maybe Harpo finger bang will get set on fire. We can watch him fucking melt. 
That would be worth the price of admission alone. And there it is, Jim, from Jim Cornette Experience 369. Can you find anything that I was incorrect about? Certainly it was deflating the <laughs> ending of that match. <laughs> okay. First of all, the way this thing was set up, I can buy the wire around the ring ropes, right? I've had, I've been involved in, I've booked barbed wire cage matches where people, the barbed wire was around the ring so that you couldn't get out or nobody could get in. Except that wasn't what this was. They just wrapped barbed wire around the ring ropes, but it wasn't on one, there was nothing on one side where the stage side was, so everybody could just get in and out freely. And if they didn't want to bother to go to the stage side, they could just drop down and roll out under the bottom rope. And the rest of it, barbed wire boards leaned up against the turnbuckles, the referee in the hazmat suit. Then on the stage, there's a garbage can with a barbed wire baseball bat in it and a kendo stick. And they've got a chair wrapped in barbed wire. And <clears throat> so they, when they started out, it looked like they might actually know what the fuck they were doing because they were milking using the wire and it somewhat made sense and they they were trying to push each other into it or whatever. This somehow made sense despite the fact that this is just so visually stupid that you you can't... When you've already got a ring wrapped in barbed wire and barbed wire boards leaned up in it, and barbed wire surrounding the ringside. You've got to still have a barbed wire chair and a garbage can and a baseball bat and a blah, blah, blah. This isn't a hat on a hat. It's a fucking, you're wearing three suits, one on top of another. And then finally, they go out on the stage because you can leave the ring enclosed in deadly exploding barbed wire freely. Moxley gives old Harpo two little pussy shots with the baseball bat. So the big badass has a chance to hit this guy with a baseball bat and he pokes him in the gut and gives him another little shot. It's it, Now it's completely fake. Thank you for removing all doubt, balding plumber. Um, Harpo at one point blinded Moxley with powder and threw him into the wire so the effects could go off. And then they, they, you know, they started using all the gimmicks, whether it be the garbage can or the kendo stick, a chair wrapped in barbed wire, everything that's made pro wrestling look like shit and made people ashamed to be fans of it for the last 20 years, all in one match. So it's nice they had it all together. And then Moxley gets color. Um, so they're in the stupidest, fakest looking, most illogical, most visually comic parody of pro wrestling that you can really ever put on a big budget production and he's down there cutting himself to make it seem more real blood adds drama in a grudge wrestling match not a cartoon garbage parody then it's just well, you're gonna bleed anyway because you're rolling around in all this barbed wire of course i believe from what i could tell they were only using two-pronged barbed wire which makes it easier not to get caught up in the shit, but they're still cutting themselves, so they're fucking morons because they're rolling around in it and blowing off the effects. And then did you see fucking the, the supposed baby face in this thing, Moxley? The baby face is always supposed to be smarter than the heel, right? The babyface wraps the barbed wire around his own arm just to clothesline Twinkle Toes. Now, meanwhile, there's a baseball bat laying five feet away from both of them, but nobody actually goes for it. It just laid there for 15 minutes. They're wrapping barbed wire around their arms and fists to hit each other with, but there's a baseball bat that if you were a real man, which apparently neither one of these fucking pricks are, you could just pick up and you could finish this issue in about two or three swacks. But no. More on that later. Uh, They take a bump on the barbed wire boards on the floor. Olivier was down there forever trying to get color. Finally, he got some. 
But really, they could have saved money at this point and just showed one of Ian Rotten's old VHS tapes because it's a garbage death match. It's the same thing every time. It matters not. Uh, the only thing they missed the opportunity here was they could have had the guy that eats the live chickens uh, be the referee instead of whoever was in the hazmat suit. That could have made it just a little more sideshowish. And then finally... 25 minutes into this interminable fiasco, Moxley realizes there's still a baseball bat laying there and picks it up. And here comes Gallows and Anderson. And I counted, Brian, Moxley hit Anderson six times with the baseball bat, then hit Gallows six times with the baseball bat. <laughs> they weren't down for 30 seconds. And then Moxley got hit supposedly in the head, but the replay showed that it was actually kind of a shoulder chest shot by Twinkle Toes with an exploding barbed wire bat where an effect went off when he got hit with it. And that was a two count. He hit the fucking guy supposedly in the head with an exploding barbed wire baseball bat for a two count. Those words have never been said before in professional wrestling, and still haven't, because this isn't professional wrestling. And then Gallows and Anderson just come back in and just in front of the referee, because it's no disqualification, which, as we all know, as Dan Hausen would tell you, shitty booking, shitty booking, Hausen. Gallows and Anderson help give Olivia or help Olivier give Moxley the one winged fairy onto a chair for a three count because, of course, a one winged fairy on a folding chair is much more deadly than exploding barbed wire baseball bat. And you know what we had left at this point, don't you, Brian? Well, apparently, and I four fucking minutes. <laughs> what I was going to say is. The commentators also let us know that there's no way to stop the explosion. Yes. Even though the match is coming to a close, the bombs have to go off. There's no way to get around that. There's no way to turn the switch to defuse this situation. We've just discovered that apparently, even though this match just ended four minutes early, the ring's going to blow up in four minutes. Fortunately, everybody had time to leave and plenty of time. Oh, no, wait. This was insane. They went home so early. And they've told the people what the time left is. And I think they even showed the clock by this point. They've got to continue to get heat on Moxley, who's selling like he's halfway dead for once, anyway, he's selling. And they beat him up, and nobody comes out, and nobody comes out, and they handcuff him. And he's been, nobody comes out and they have to go back and Olivier's mugging for the camera. And then they go back to getting some more heat on him. And then they're taking the barbed wire bat and raking it over his head. And now the announcers they're it's literally, they're beating a dead Moxley. And the announcers say under two minutes. And Olivier hits Moxley with the bat twice more as they die twisting in the wind. And finally, at a minute left in Jim Ross's comment, are these guys stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Which he meant they need to get out of the ring before it blows up, but it was perfect at that. Are these guys stupid? Yes. Yes, they are. And they also have no concept of how to time their shit. So finally, the heels leave with a minute left because now the sirens and the gongs and the amp, 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 it sounded like the China syndrome. Some bad shit's going to take place here. This ring's going to blow. Here comes Eddie Kingston, who was the star of the night. He had frantic body language. He was, he was in a panic. He was looking left and right, trying to get his old friend Moxley, who they've had these wars, but really he deep down still appreciates and loves their friendship. And he's trying to drag this guy out of the ring because, oh my God, the clock is counting down. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, uh, uh. Woo, woo. it's gonna blow and the fucking announcers take cover take cover and it blows <laughs> and it looked like Gilberg's sparklers on the ring posts 
a boom from a couple of firecrackers and a puff of smoke and a hearty hi yo we fucked all of you <laughs> and the ring didn't blow up and the fans start booing and it came off like a popcorn fart but because they had thought that this was going to be impressive Poor Eddie Kingston. By the way, where was he during the five minutes of heat? Had he already driven out and been halfway home and had to turn around? But he was waiting Kingston. in the parking lot for John Moxley. Uh, well, I could understand Moxley laying there because they'd beat the shit out of him. He had a reason to sell like death seven minutes into this match. Poor Eddie Kingston covered Moxley with his fucking body. And the sparklers went off, and Kingston sold like death. He looked like a man who had had a heart attack while fucking his mistress and just slumped over face first and laid there. It buried him. Nothing happened to him. And then to make it worse, they wouldn't get off of it. They had the doctor and the trainer and everybody come in and those guys never got in. They were laying there and they fucking wouldn't get off of it. And finally they signed off. And apparently from what we saw also on Twitter, after they signed off the pay-per-view, Moxley was so embarrassed that he tried to save it by saying, well, at least Omega made a shitty gimmick match and good night from Jacksonville you want to play my clip again that was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen I mean in the sense that I'm embarrassed for the promotion for the company for Moxley for poor Eddie Kingston <laughs> poor Eddie Kingston didn't deserve this I can't even imagine how you can make it more underwhelming now, earlier in the match, I liked the match. I know what you think. You just talked about it. Up until the run-in from the Good Brothers, and they should change their name to the Grown Brothers, because every time they're on fucking TV, I groan. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Here because we go. They're, because they suck. I mean, I'm just going to come out and say it. They're not very good. But because they were in the Bullet Club, a I lot like of people... Their, I like their matches. They just have them doing stupid shit just like everybody else here. Well, I don't need to see them ever again, but I'm sure I'm going to see them plenty. But they come out, once the run-in happened, to me, whatever the match was building towards, it stopped. I got into it. I was able to lose myself in it. How are they going to end this match? They have to do a big explosion because they promised it. I don't think it's been revealed yet at that point that no matter what, the bombs have to go <laughs> off. There's no stopping them. If the fire commissioner shows up, Tough. We have to get these bombs off. <laughs> so I got into the match, and earlier in the match, when Moxley would get shot into the ropes or Omega, I thought that looked pretty good. It that wasn't bad. It wasn't offensive or or really egregiously phony. No, that I thought looked good. So I'm like, wow, AEW did that right. That looked good. This explosion is really going to be something. So then <laughs> I, I even start thinking like. The people there, are they going to have to like move back from ringside? Is there going to be a lot of smoke? What exactly are I, they? I'm, I'm hoping for Jane and Sonny Kiss and a bunch of other people to even lean up on the edge of their seats. Oh, will you one. stop it? Oh, will you stop it? But I'm thinking, I'm like, what exactly does blow up? Like, what exactly is the, what, you know, exploding? What is exploding? Is there an actual item that explodes? I'm really putting a lot of thought into this. Early in the match, they say, you know, the people at ringside, they have to wear flame-retardant clothing to be able to sit there. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, you know, they're really serious <laughs> about this. The first signs that something may not be right with the explosion is when Moxley and Omega went off. I think uh, Moxley did his DDT into the barbed wire. Yes. But he was the one who got caught in the barbed wire. Yeah. <laughs> not Omega. It looked like it hurt him far worse than it hurt Omega. But there was no big explosion. I thought if you landed on those boards, there was going to be a big explosion. So it's like, oh, that, that's not good. And then, like I said, once Anderson and Gallows ran in, I just groaned. 
well, not just because it was just, them, but because sixteen baseball bat shots to two guys, and and oh, they're just right back up on you. Yeah, come on. Shaq goes through a table. He's dead. He's dead, and he vanishes. But these guys, and then the handcuffs. I said it, whatever, a month ago. I'm sick of handcuffs in wrestling. And they go for the handcuffs. And also, just, see, he, here's the thing. They handcuffed his hands behind him. How did that keep him in the ring that was about to blow up? He could just roll and roll underneath the body. If he was capable of rolling, the handcuffs were not going to deter him in any way. And then poor Eddie Kingston gets in the ring. And I'm like, you know, I hate the finish. I was finally enjoying the match. They ruined it with the finish. They ruined it with the excessive beat down but you know at least we get this nice storybook ending of you know feud of the year eddie <laughs> kingston and moxley eddie kingston comes sacrifices himself to save moxley i don't know how that and he really did look panicked he yeah, was like oh he my was God, great nothing else to do he you said it before he may have been the mvp he did everything he needed to do right and he's there and i'm sure everyone has seen it by now but it was a couple sparklers on the ring posts, and then it was like just a couple. Like I've been to Fourth of July parties that have been more impressive than that. <laughs> Legit on Long hey, Island, where the cops I've are patrolling. A, I've had a couple of arguments around the house here that have been more exciting <laughs> than that. And all this happens. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, and you hear the fans. It's not as uh, audible as it is on some of the. Fan footage I've seen, but the fans start booing. Well, that's because they turned the crowd mics down as soon as they really, because it was start. It, it rumbled low at first, and it and as they realized that's what it was, then it got bigger. And poor Eddie Kingston is selling it like he's dead. He's selling it like everything has exploded everywhere near him, and he is dead. <laughs> so I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Tony Khan's explanation in a moment, but when they try to pretend like this was the intended result. No, the fact that the commentators weren't in on it and Eddie Kingston sold this like he died means that that wasn't the intended result. You actually thought there was going to be a big explosion. Yeah, and no, nobody's buying that hogwash excuse. This was three hours and 45 minutes of if you gave an amateur class at any wrestling school a big budget and said, do what you want, here it was. It's It's shameful. Well, that was AEW Revolution, like you said. Hours and hours and hours of wrestling yeah. entertainment. Hours and hours and hours. I know where they got the Revolution name from. That's what the fans that want to take up arms. Instead of storming the Capitol, they're going to storm Daly's place. Jeez, but it couldn't be as dangerous as Daly's place already is with all those kidnappings and assaults back there. <laughs> 